So today we are going to talk about the first instrument that Moneo built and it's time for the Voxotrons. And how exactly did we found this Voxotrons? One day we went to the warehouse, we were looking for a material for an instrument idea we had. Uh, we were looking for some kind of tube that was really soft and white. And the idea was a completely different one. But then we have stumbled upon around 50 meters of this yellow drain pipe. And we picked it up and we accidentally dropped it. And when we dropped it, we heard this amazing sound from the resonance of the draining pipe. And we just go, whoa, we have to do something with this. So the original idea, we forget about that one. And we just bought a bunch of meters drain pipe instead. We actually had no idea what to do with it. We started to scream inside it and heard that resonance tone. Yeah, it was like a did you do like sound. The sound was amplified and it was formatted in some kind of way. So it, what you were screaming in one end came out really different in the other way. It was kind of like an acoustic synthesizer or harmonizer or something like that. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. So we started to think about what can we do with this kind of uh, pipe. We, we knew we, wa we wanted to use the voice and we knew we wanted that it should create some kind of ambient sound or drone or something like that. I don't remember quite how it came about, but we, we tried to shape, shape the pipe and it ended up in a kind of S form. And the thing with uh, the fact that we're using the voice is that uh, the instrument itself gets very expressive because the voice is so close to us as humans and so connected to emotions and feelings. So everything you do with, with the voice, is, it's very easy to express different kinds of feeling or musical uh, phrases. You can, you can uh, make something really quiet or you can scream loud as hell and you can form and shape the sound with, with your mouth and, and use it very much like an, an instrument which is so connected to us as persons. I remember we tried to make this S forms to stand on their own and they couldn't so we we had to uh, make some stands for it involving a lot of welding yeah and we actually got some help with that i remember you had an idea that uh, i mean they were br yellow bright but you had an idea that they should pop out a little bit more uh, visually yes they should lit, lit up with light from inside. And uh, we used some kind of light string uh, cable, sort of. And they are, were blue, so inside it, it went from yellow to green, most, mostly. And, and it became kind of an architectural piece of work, two green lightning strange tubes on each side of the stage. Yeah, and, and uh, most often we started the performance with the kind of singing into them. Yeah. And shaping the mouth and make strange sounds. It's a really great opening because we can really decide uh, the dynamic. 
which goes from really quiet to really loud as well. Yeah. And uh, f from there, uh, it was easy to go to uh, the next, next song. When we start the concerts, they actually uh, are not lit up. They lit up when we came on the stage from each side and we're just standing there and we could closely lit up each Voxotron on the stage and then we started to make sounds. The way we constructed the instruments is quite simple but it's pretty unconventional at the same time. So uh, in the beginning of each tube we have a, a microphone, a normal dynamic vocal microphone and we are leading the signal from that microphone uh, down to an um, effect processor which is a Digitech Quad version 2 we use nowadays which is perfect for this kind of setup because the effect has four effect engines which can be used set totally separately and configured as you want. And we use it in the way that we are using first a, a kind of a, a delay, very short delay with many uh, repetitions uh, and where each repetition can change in pitch with a pitch shifter. Just a slightly so it go up which makes this sound just go higher, higher, higher or it go just lower, 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 lower. And we can alternate this pitch uh, so it's really, uh, it's getting really variated over time. And we take that uh, signal from the effect processor and put it into an amplifier and send it back to the Voxotrons because just after the microphone and close to our mouth is a small speaker inside the tube. So the processed sound is traveling through the whole tube, which is affecting the signal and making it with its own resonance as well and shaping it to something different that was processed by the effect processor. And that's when we play live you see in the end of the tubes there will be one microphone and that microphone is picking up that sound that comes from our mouth into the effect processor, into the speaker and then go through the tube to shape the sound once again. So it's, it's, it's not complicated signal chain but it's a bit unconventional. One of the most rememberable concert we have made with the Voxotrons, I would say, is Norberg Festivalen. And uh, the way we had the stage and how the sound came out was very majestic in a way. Yeah, it was in the, at the main stage called Mimer with which is a huge concrete building from an old mine. Yeah. It has kind of a special reverberance, a special acoustics. And it has a reverb of seven seconds, which makes this room a bit complicated for many acts. And for some acts, it's just perfect and makes everything beautiful, kind of. And I guess we fell more in the latter category, where it worked really, really well. Yeah, it, it does. We hadn't any problems at all. You have, you have to think about the, those seconds. You hear it and you have to adjust to it to make it work when you play so you don't get confused in a way. Yeah, and if you don't have in-air monitors, it's really important to listen to the to the monitor, so you 
So you play with the sound from your monitor and don't try to listen to at the, the sound c coming seven seconds later. Yeah. Then you're so totally fucked. <laughs> But it worked really well in, in that room and uh, looked, looked great when they were standing there on this plateau, which is maybe three, four meters high, which is a kind of a natural stage uh, in that building. It's, it's a very big stage. And you, you're standing quite a few meters away from each other. And then you have people all around up in the ceiling and, and down and on every level. Yeah. So... Um, it's an amazing venue for electronic and experimental music. Actually, we have a song called Mimer. Yeah, that's true. And I guess it's uh, a bit inspired from Mimerlaven at Norberg Festivalen. I would say very inspired. <laughs> So we hope that gave you some insights on uh, how the Voxotrons came to be and why they look as they do and how they work. And that's all for today. See you next time. See you. Bye. Bye.